Ron, and congratulations. You made it through a very tough admissions process, and we're so proud to have admitted you in such a competitive year. I'm Daryl Jones, and I'm the Senior Associate Director of Admissions, Coordinator for Multicultural Admission, and Intercollegiate Athletics Liaison. And it's my pleasure to welcome you, along with four fantastic alums, to a program we're calling The Power of the Gettysburg College Network. All of this getting into college is great, and certainly having a great career during college is fantastic as well. But the piece that matters the most is what we do afterwards. We know that through your lifetime, you will have several different career options, and we know that that's fantastic. But what is more important than all of that is how we get you started. So with our great alums, we're going to talk to you about how Gettysburg Connections continue to help them, how they continue to help others, and what you can do to take advantage of such a great network. So let's start with Sarah. Thank you, Daryl. Hi, everyone. I'm Sarah Levinson, uh, class of 2009. Uh, I was an English major at Gettysburg College with a few minors, and I am Vice President of Business Development at Prometric, which is headquartered in Baltimore. Um, but in this age of remote work, I don't live there. I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, which is where I'm from, and I'm thrilled to be here, and I congratulate you all, and I will flip it over to Kevin. Hi, everyone. My name is Kevin Benevente. I graduated from Gettysburg College in 2020. I studied math and economics. Um, and through the alumni network, um, I found myself at T. Rowe Price, where I work now as a quantitative analyst. Congratulations um, on your mission. And I'm excited as well to share some of my experiences. Um, I'll pass it to Fergan. Hi there, uh, Fergan Ember, class of 2016. Um, I majored in biology with a minor in business while I was at Gettysburg. Um, currently, I am living in Philadelphia. I'm a third year PhD candidate um, at the Lewis Katz School of Medicine at Temple University. Um, as uh, Sarah and Kevin said, I'm so excited for you guys. Congratulations on your acceptance um, and really looking forward to this, this great dialogue. Uh, BJ? Thanks. I'm BJ Jones. Um, I graduated way back in 1994. Um, and uh, I'm currently president and CEO of the Battery Park uh, City Authority. And I live here in um, Manhattan. So here's my first question for all of you. Why Gettysburg College for you? So if you can think back a little further back for some of you, what is it that had you choose Gettysburg College? And more important, what made it a good choice for you? So BJ, let's go in reverse order and talk about how you chose Gettysburg College and what made it a great choice for you. Yeah, it's a great question. And, you know, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't sure really what I wanted to do with my life when I was... Um, looking at um, colleges, and, and I looked at many, but I, I knew that I had an interest in a couple of, you know, very different things. I was interested in education and potentially teaching elementary school. I was interested in um, business and um, finance and politics and also music. Um, I knew I wanted to go to a small school and a liberal arts college um, but um, it was important to me to find a place where I could explore all of my interests and, you know, looking up and down the East Coast and then some um, Gettysburg College, other than being, you know, a great place in its own right, checked all those boxes for me, a place where I could explore all my interests. And so that's really um, what did it. And, I, you know, just as a footnote, I'm from Gettysburg College and everyone who grew up in Gettysburg when I was there, you know, the idea was to leave Gettysburg when it came time to college and see the world. And so I, I didn't expect that I would end up staying at Gettysburg uh, to go to school, but that's, that's where um, my search led me. I will tell you, BJ, you were 
a bit of a pioneer because for a while after you were there, you superstar, Gettysburg High School, believe it or not, changed from a place in which hardly anybody attended Gettysburg College to a place that even faculty and administrators and deans had students who attended Gettysburg College, some of whom literally lived right across the street from the campus. So thank you for being such a great <laughs> pioneer. Thank you. <laughs> Fergan. Uh, so for me, it was slightly different. I mean, I when I was looking for colleges, I knew that I didn't want to go to a larger university. I wasn't interested in that sort of state school um, experience. Um, and I had a mentor in, in high school who was very big on small liberal arts colleges. And so that was kind of my first introduction um, to schools like Gettysburg. And so I only applied to small liberal arts colleges. Um, and I picked Gettysburg um, really just because I felt like that was where I wanted to go to college, right? I mean, I got into a couple of other schools that were very similar in size, very similar in what it is they were offering. I knew I wanted to major in biology, so that wasn't really the issue there. Um, it honestly just came down to me visiting the campuses and, and getting to see some of the students that were there and um, meeting some of the faculty. And I decided, yeah, I think Gettysburg is where I want to be. And here we are. <laughs> All right, thank you. And you also had quite a storied career that I'm going to try to pry out of you as far as awards and accolades that, that you received at Gettysburg. Kevin. So I'm originally from California and that was the number one question I would get on campus is how did you find Gettysburg College and why would you leave San Diego? Um, but for me, I met uh, the admissions rep at the time, Abby Callen. I met her at a college fair just down the street from my house, and it was the first time I'd ever heard about Gettysburg College. And I remember thinking, is this the same area as Remember the Titans and the battlefield and, and everything? Um, so that's how I was first introduced to the college. And then I, I wanted to visit during Get Acquainted weekend because um, I, I didn't want to go so far from home having not seen the campus firsthand. Um, and I remember that weekend, I felt welcome um, and included right away. All of the students that I talked to, all the faculty, they seemed so passionate about what they were doing. Um, and I truly could see myself there for four years. So I was sold on the school and sold on the academics. And then I also had the chance to play football. Um, so Gettysburg really provided me a great opportunity to have a well-rounded experience. And as uh, BJ and Fergan alluded to, uh, being able to pursue my passions and have the freedom to explore. And uh, I'm grateful for all the relationships that I cultivated in my four years. So Kevin, I don't know if you even knew this, but at the time that you were applying to Gettysburg, as far as states are concerned, California was usually in the top seven or eight most represented states in our applicant pool. Did you know that? I don't think I knew that at the time. There's always time to learn something. Okay, Sarah. <laughs> We're always learning from you, Daryl, even after graduation. Um, I love hearing everyone's answers. So many cool different stories. Um, so I uh, had applied to several liberal arts schools, kind of like Fergan was saying, I knew that I wanted a small school. Uh, and actually I was set to go, um, ready to go to Allegheny or uh, Susquehanna or kind of those similar schools. And I did get a scholarship to Allegheny. So that was attractive. And my guidance counselor suggested Gettysburg out of nowhere. And he was like, they have a really good English lit program. The professors are great. And I was like, I don't know, I'm not really into history. Like, I don't really think I wanna go visit, um, but he really insisted. And so my parents took me for a visit and it sounds really cheesy, but I remember the moment I put my foot on the ground on campus, I just like had a feeling and I just knew. Um, and then when I did my interview with Gail Sweezy, uh, my admissions interview, we talked about public service and we talked a lot about CPS, the, the Center for Public Service on campus. And, it, and we had like such a really in-depth conversation about community service and it just seemed like such a good community and that ended up being a big part of my time uh, at Gettysburg. So um, yeah, it was by chance and I feel really fortunate that I really felt like that was where I was, I was supposed to go. 
uh, and now I've stayed connected. So it played out well. Thanks, Daryl. Well, thank you. We are certainly glad that you attended Gettysburg because it was to our benefit. So to all of our guests, if you have questions for our fantastic alumni panel, please put them into the Q&A and then those will be fed to me. So Sarah, I want to dig a little deeper into your career at Gettysburg College because certainly for high school students who are admitted, I know it might be hard to see themselves as graduating from college and then figuring out what careers are because certainly in their lifetimes, things will change, technology will change and careers, most of which have not been created yet will be their lives. So let's think back to when you were at Gettysburg College. What were the special moments that you had both in the classroom and beyond, if you could think of a few, that really, truly made Gettysburg College special to you? Yeah, such a great question. Um, so I would say of everything, there were two that were the most memorable. The first one would be my first year seminar uh, with Chris Fee, which was literature about homelessness. So it was a way that I had never really approached English Lit before. It was specifically about the problem of homelessness. Um, we read a lot of books that were public policy focused and about kind of the struggle that many people go through and certainly a problem that's gotten much worse uh, during COVID. So two things happened. Um, I got to do a lot of community service both in Gettysburg and in like the DC area and beyond um, as part of that class. And then the second part was like, I kind of found my people who were into community service and into public policy and those issues. And um, a lot of the people, including the professor, were at my wedding, you know, a decade and a half later that were in that seminar with me. So it's pretty incredible to think about like that string that was carried through uh, life from that seminar. And then the second thing I would say um, was writing my senior thesis uh, with one of my professors who has since retired, which makes me feel really old. Um, but anyways, having that weekly, I had weekly meetings with her, you know, I wrote a 60 page thesis on um, to, to uh, mid-century poets and being able to like hone my writing over that time and really, really focus on it, I think uh, built me into the writer that I am today uh, and having that, that um, concentrated time to kind of deeply study something that I was really passionate about uh, was a really remarkable experience. Um, and when I read it now, I, I, it feels like who wrote that? I don't know that person, but it was a really, uh, those two, two things I think were really, um, yeah, memorable in my experience. There were many, but those are two good ones. So it sounds almost as if some of your in-class experiences led to some interests beyond the classroom, especially with your first year seminar. Is that right? Yeah, I, I think um, that first year seminar and being exposed to community service outside of Gettysburg, but also some of the um, institutions that had been established to help people within the Gettysburg community kind of helped me see how I could connect the readings to what I was doing outside the classroom. Um, and I think that that carried through. You know, I started working at CPS um, within two to three months of being in that seminar. And then I led immersion project trips. I led the, I led the first trip to New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina. Um, so it became a really big, big area of passion uh, for me. And then I think writing, uh, you know, I'm in sales now. I, I didn't go get a PhD in English or anything like that, although that was on the table for a while. Um, writing is a skill that I think can be helpful to everyone in any career. So I feel really grateful that I got to deeply study that. You're on mute, Daryl. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. So we have some questions pouring in. Um, I'll ask two of you to answer this one. 
So do you feel that being far from a major metropolitan area and the experiences that you had, has it helped or hindered you? Now, I will tell the questioner, our state capital of Harrisburg is only about 40 minutes. Philadelphia, two hours east. Baltimore is an hour. Washington, D.C., an hour and 15 minutes. New York City, three and a half to four hours. But any two that would like to talk about our location and whether that helped or hindered you. Well, maybe I'll jump in just a little bit because, you know, I, I had the experience kind of growing up in Gettysburg College and, or <laughs> basically, but <I'll, laughs> growing up in Gettysburg and then going to Gettysburg College, you know, you might imagine that, that you know, I could run the risk of quite a sheltered um, experience. And, you know, what I found at Gettysburg is that, you know, it may feel like a small town, but kind of going back to what I was saying earlier about having so many interests and being in a place where I could explore all of those interests, it really, um, I don't know quite how to, to capture this, you know, eloquently, but, you know, Gettysburg is a small school and it's a small campus, but it's bigger than you think because of all the, the diversity of opportunity and people that you meet. Um, and so, um, and so, you know, it was really an, uh, an, a growth experience for me as, as a person, but also, you know, being near all of the cities that Daryl mentioned, you know, I spent a summer interning in Washington, DC, um, you know, and being able to explore that and figure that out was easy from Gettysburg. And that also kind of set me on the path that I'm on, um, today. So, um, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot there. Don't be, don't, don't let the small town and small campus fool you. And Fergan, how about if you chime in on that as well? Uh, yeah, and I was going to say, I, so I'm originally from New York City. I was born and raised in Brooklyn. Um, and so I also would get the question all the time. It's like, one, how did you even hear about Gettysburg, PA? And um, why did you leave New York City to uh, go to school in central PA. And I mean, even my dad said the same thing. He would, you know, brings up the fact that, you know, so many people go to New York City for college, you know, they're looking at NYU and Columbia and those sort of, of places. Um, but for me, again, it all ties back to what I was looking for out of my college experience. I wanted that sort of smaller environment. I wanted to be away from the city um, because I wanted to, one, have access to living on campus, right? Like, um, having that whole what you see on, on, on the movies and on TV of what college is uh, supposed to be. Um, and my siblings went to college in New York City and they had a very different experience than I did, right? They lived at home, they would commute, they would take the train, you know, they would talk about sometimes they would have to study on the subway just so that they can make it to class on time. And, you know, it was just something that I wasn't looking for. Um, so honestly, being at Gettysburg 100% helped what it was that I was looking for. Um, and making sure that I always was on top of my work as well, right? You know, you don't really have any excuse. You live by your library. It's a walking distance from your dorm. So um, I think that that definitely was a, a great experience for me. And I have no regrets about uh, moving to Central PA from, from New York. Um, but like Daryl said, you know, we're not far from um, a lot of metropolitan areas. And I would go back home to New York as often as I could. I would just take Amtrak, um, and that wasn't difficult at all, so. Thank you. And I give the ag example of the DC metro area because I commute to and from it every day to go to work. So it's really not that far. So here's another fantastic question. So for any of you who were undecided about your majors and had multiple interests, how did the timing of the courses you chose or how you moved through the semesters shape what you ultimately decided to pursue? So if you were undecided or as I call it, open-minded at some point, how did the timing of the courses you chose guide what you chose? Anybody who wants it. Uh, I'll, I'll just say briefly is that, you know, I was a little worried about that because I had a lot of different interests, but um, um, 
I would say to students, you know, not to stress out about that part and certainly not worry about it yet. You know, it's kind of the journey itself, if you're undecided, is what can be a really interesting one. And some of my uh, most interesting classes at Gettysburg were the ones in areas where I was filling requirements and not pursuing my major. I took a class in Chinese literature. I can't remember why, but I really liked it. Biology made me think maybe I should be in pre-med when that was not on the long list of potential um, majors for me. And so, you know, I think at, a, at Gettysburg, you know, kind of finding your way and maybe doing it in not a straight line can actually be of great benefit. Anyone else have a thought about that if you were undecided at first and how you made your way through? I would just share one I, nugget, Daryl. Like I wasn't undecided ever on English Lit. I think I was always going to do that. But I think there's so many interesting um, minors and different tracks at Gettysburg. Um, like BJ was just saying, sometimes you end up studying something kind of by accident. Um, I am not ashamed to say that I uh, was failing out of my first year Latin <laughs> class that I placed into. Uh, and my advisor uh, told me I was failing. And of course, I was a tiny freshman. So I started crying, you know, and wanted to take a breather outside. And he was like, I want you to try a philosophy class. Um, and I went to my first philosophy class and just fell in love. That almost became my major. Um, I was like two credits shy uh, of a double major, but I ended up studying that for four years and like working for a philosophy professor while I was there. So I think you can find so many interesting tracks. Uh, but anyway, there's a cool question for Kevin in the chat. So I'll, I'll give it to, to you, Daryl. Yeah, so Kevin, as you mentioned earlier, you came from California and specifically San Diego to Gettysburg. Correct. <laughs> Did you have any sense of culture shock when you showed up? Did it wear off? How long did it last? So, yeah, interestingly enough, I guess that kind of sense of culture shock is what I was seeking. Like I wanted to move ca from California and experience a different part of the country because I grew up there my whole life. And I really wanted the chance to like meet different kinds of students from all across the nation and also all across the world. Um, and as I befriended different people uh, throughout my four years, it was cool to learn about, you know, different lifestyles and different perspectives that people grew up with, um, you know, whether that's like clothing brands or music or different, you know, subtle pop culture um, that like I, I was really interested in learning more about, you know, other people's backgrounds that were different from mine. Um, and that was also like a trait of Gettysburg that was attractive to me as a prospective student. You know, having, having visited campus, I felt that it was pretty representative of a diverse set of beliefs and perspectives. Um, so in my four years, it was a culture shock, but I wouldn't say detrimental. It was something that um, I thought was pretty positive. And now I think it's pretty cool that uh, whether I'm on the East Coast or West Coast, there's always people I can kind of connect with, um, which I think again, is pretty cool. So I want to refer back to this question about courses you took and majors. So Sarah, particularly intrigued by this whole idea that you loved English, you loved writing, and now you're the vice president of a company. So how did you get there? Um, yeah, I'm in the one career I said I would never do, which was sales. Uh, I was raised by a salesman. My dad was in sales for a long time, uh, and I said I would never do it. So uh, when I left Gettysburg, I went to graduate school to a writing program at Carnegie Mellon, which was professional writing. It was a master's. And so I actually studied all different types of writing, grant writing, publishing, editing, all, all different things. Uh, for a while, I thought I'd be a book editor. Then I was like a social media consultant. So I tumbled through all sorts of interesting uh, careers. Um, and then uh, when I moved to California, I lived in California for about seven years. Um, when, when my husband and I moved to California, 
I had to change jobs. I was working on a newspaper in Pittsburgh and I was like, what do people do in California? Probably they work in software. Uh, so I'll look for software jobs. And I knew somebody at IBM and I was planning to get a marketing or kind of blog writing job. And the woman who referred me was like, I'll only recommend you if you try sales. Uh, so I really needed a job and a recommendation. So I tried an entry level sales job and uh, it came very naturally to me, like my dad always said it would. Uh, and then uh, I just, I loved it. I stayed in it and I, um, I eventually started getting my own sales territories as I moved up. Uh, and now as a VP, uh, I'm working on, you know, only five to 10 very strategic accounts in our company. Um, but all of that writing training that I went through at Gettysburg and that kind of like deep analysis helps me think about problems and proposals and all the cycles that you go through with prospective clients. I think it, it really lent itself well what I studied at Gettysburg, but I never could have imagined back then that I'd be doing that now. Thank you for that, Sarah. So Fergan, if you could do the same, connect your academic path to your current career path. Yeah, so um, I went into Gettysburg thinking that I was going to major in biology, be on the pre-med track um, and apply to medical school uh, right after Gettysburg and you know go down the MD path. Um, but while I was at Gettysburg, um, it was my sophomore year, I started thinking maybe I don't want to go to medical school. Like I, I still enjoyed biology and I, I enjoyed science, but I just didn't picture myself as a medical doctor anymore. Um, and so it kind of became this, okay, well, what else can I do and still be in, be able to stay in this science realm? Um, and so my senior year is when I decided I am going to apply for master's programs. And so I applied to a few different uh, master's programs and I ended up going to uh, the University of Lancaster, which is in Northern England. So I did my master's over there. Um, there were a lot of things that drew me over there to begin with. One, it was a new experience. I could live in another country, um, but their programs are expedited. So it's only a one year master's um, as a as opposed to the two-year masters that they would have here in the U.S. Um, and was surprisingly cheaper, even though I was paying the international fee, right? So um, that ended up being, you know, the cherry on top of everything, um, but also solidified that, okay, I still love biology and I still love science, um, but yeah, the MD route isn't for me, and I think research is where I'd like to go. Um, and so after I finished my masters, I moved back to the U.S., and I worked at... Um, uh, Johns Hopkins School of Public Health. Um, I was a research technologist there. And it was while I was there that, you know, uh, people started getting in my ear about doing a PhD um, because a PhD was not something that I thought was in my future. I thought my master's was going to be it and I would just sort of work in industry and kind of go about that route. Um, but everyone that I was talking to at Hopkins kind of, you know, put the fire under me and they said, you know, I think you can do it. I, I don't see why not. And it makes sense um, career wise. And so I did a last minute uh, application round. I only applied to four schools um, to put that into context. Most people apply to 13 PhD programs in the sciences. Um, and I lucked out and got into uh, Temple, which is where I am now. Um, and I mean, the, the program is, is kind of what I expected it to be. And, you know, academia um, can be a pretty rough place sometimes, but um, I don't regret my decision of, you know, uh, choosing to do a PhD. And I think that um, what I, what's in store in the future is, you know, having the PhD definitely um, puts me in a nice position. Uh, so... Yeah, my trajectory has changed slightly from uh, the type of doctor that I'll be. All right. Thank you, Fergan. So, BJ, you know, I've obviously followed your career several times, but connect me with or connect us with your academic pursuits at Gettysburg College and then the major career stops you have in your past, including where you are now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, my, I think, um, you know, Gettysburg's connection to getting me 
on my career path that I've been on since um, graduating from Gettysburg in the, in the public sector and government was really kind of through a, a process of elimination, but a very happy one. You know, I had a lot of different interests and with Gettysburg, I found, you know, more and more opportunities to explore other areas. And I think that, you know, just through that, it helped me kind of get to know myself better, kind of what, what was working for me, what wasn't working for me, and kind of, you know, understand where where I wanted to um, head. And, um, you know, it was, it was through that that I realized um, that I wanted to get involved in, in government, partly through classes, but also the summer internship I had talked about earlier. And, um, you know, through a Gettysburg connection, I had um, gotten my first job in D.C., um, working for a government consulting firm, and um, ended up getting my master's in public administration um, while I was at it. So it was kind of like Gettysburg helped me figure out what I wanted to do. And it wasn't a particular, it wasn't all about my major or, you know, all, it was like the whole, the whole thing combined just kind of shaped me. Um, and that, and that really, and I think that experience is what, you know, made that, that possible, just realizing kind of what I was cut out for and, and interested in. And, um, that's been my path ever since, um, in government as a consultant working for New York City and and now um, working for um, New York State, um, you know, doing a lot of things that I never expected I would be doing, but, you know, similar to my career at Gettysburg, just kind of always exploring. And that has been a theme that has kind of continued to, to, to stay with me, kind of a, a certain amount of, you know, curiosity and problem solving that, you know, I, I think I picked up at Gettysburg and, has kept me engaged in this field since. Thank you so much, BJ. So Kevin, I have a double question for you. The first one is about connecting your academic life to what you're doing now. You knew that I was gonna ask you, that's what made me laugh a little, but here's another. In the state of California, there aren't as many colleges of our size, many major and wonderful large University of California system schools. So I'd like for you to make the academic kinetic connection. And then I'd like to ask if you looked at any large schools as a part of your search. And if you did, why did you choose Gettysburg? Sure, so starting with the first piece, um, entering Gettysburg, I knew that I wanted to do something with math. It was my favorite subject in high school. I always enjoyed working with numbers. Um, and I wasn't exactly clear on how that would play out in terms of a career path. So I was drawn to the math econ major that Gettysburg offered, a unique interdisciplinary program that combined um, higher level econ courses with higher level quantitative courses. Um, and then through that track, um, I was introduced to finance, the world of finance, um, which I really didn't have any experience with before in high school. So my junior year, I took um, our intro level finance class with Drew Murphy, where we learned basic concepts like time value of money, basic portfolio construction. Um, and that's where I realized that investment management seemed like a really cool career path that resonated with me because it was kind of a combination of two things I was passionate about, which was math and using numbers to model real world problems um, and answer questions with hard data. And then also helping others. I thought through asset management, I wanted to work for a global, for a global firm that helps others uh, secure a future for themselves, for their families and helps others retire. Uh, so I, I talked to Drew because I was really enjoying his class and I asked him about a career in investment management. And then that's how um, I got my foot in the door with T. Rowe Price because they have a rotational program that before me, there were six straight Gettysburg alums that actually placed into this program. It's called the Investment Fellowship Program. So he connected me with the graduate a year ahead of me, also named Kevin. Um, so I talked to him about the program. He talked to me about this tradition of Gettysburg grads that we had, this pipeline that had been established. Um, so during the interview process, what was really cool is that I interviewed with, I think, two or three different Gettysburg grads just by chance. Um, in a large super day, uh, day of interviews. 
So having that instant connection with them in the interview room was pretty gratifying and having that shared connection and just overall going through that whole job search process my senior year and, and realizing firsthand um, the strength of Gettysburg's alumni network and having it come full circle was a pretty cool experience. Um, so that's, I guess, connecting my classroom journey with my career path. And then the second part, um, comparing larger universities to smaller private liberal arts schools. So yeah, I didn't apply to any of the large state schools, but I was looking at um, some other private schools that were larger than Gettysburg. Um, and for me, I was just very drawn to the community aspect that campus offered, um, the opportunity to form meaningful relationships with faculty, um, as well as other students. I think at a larger school, you could have a large portion of the student body uh, potentially living off campus or commuting um, on weekends. And at Gettysburg, you don't have that. I was really drawn to the fact that the student body is always present on campus. So there's always fun things to do throughout the week and on weekends. And you really um, feel like a sense of community um, that lasts all four years. So I guess to contrast the two types of schools, that's what um, more so resonated with me um, and sold me on Gettysburg. Thank you, Kevin. And what I tell people about this is pretty simple. Larger schools have large alumni bodies, but it sounds like for you, Kevin, the personal connection and the power of the Gettysburg Network was truly that. It was personal. People knew you. People knew Gettysburg College. People helped you because of a personal connection. Was Is that accurate? Yeah, no, I, I would definitely agree with that. All right, thank you. And related to that, so... There's a question about smaller class sizes and building closer relationships with your professors. So have any of you had an especially memorable experience with a professor, you know, that, or a reasoning why you prefer smaller classes? And I just will remind the folks in our audience, all of your professors, all of them, the full teaching faculty, they are PhDs, so there's no conflict between them pursuing an advanced degree and you, their office hours and you, research opportunities and you. The full focus is on undergraduate teaching, which means all resources go to you. But I'd like to have any of you talk about that whole What's the close relationship that you were able to perform with these faculty members beginning in the first year? I'm sure we all have them. Does anyone want to go first or you want me to go first, Daryl? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I mean, we're all nodding when you're talking. I'm sure we all have um, a special or a connection that we had with the professor. I think it's very, very hard to get that in a larger school, like Kevin was saying, so the classes are so much bigger. Um, I had a lot of great connections with my English Lit professors and philosophy professors, but I think the most special one was with Suzanne Flynn, uh, is with Suzanne Flynn. I have never once stayed in a hotel in Gettysburg, ever. Um, so I think that's, that's enough uh, in itself. So she was my advisor uh, for my four years there. But, but the most important impact she had on my life was when I was a senior and I said that I wanted to go get a PhD in English, which really I was just saying because I thought kind of like Fergan was saying, like that was just like the path I thought I was supposed to do. And she said to me, you know, I'll write you this recommendation if you want, and, and I think you could get in, but I think maybe you should look at other things or think about working or maybe look at a shorter program that's more broad than just PhD English studies. And she's like, I think in the long run, you'll get to experiment and maybe find something else that you really like. You know, she knew how challenging it was to get uh, a job as a professor um, and that it was real work to go to seven, six or seven years of getting a PhD. So she really helped me think through that decision. And because I went to a shorter 
master's program, um, like Fergan was saying, mine was like a year to, to a year and a half. I was working right away and I found a career that I really love. Um, and now she jokes when I go back, you know, you know, I, I changed the course of your life by not letting you get a PhD. Um, but I think, you know, she had a real investment in me. She knew me and she was able to make that suggestion because she knew me as a person, not just a student. And I think that's hard to get uh, at a larger school. Thank you. And now, Fergan, I know that you studied abroad, but can you talk about the experience of living in another country for a semester and what that was like for you? How did it change you? What was the experience like for you? Yeah, I mean, so I, again, kind of going into Gettysburg, I, I knew about their study abroad program. I knew a lot of students um, would study abroad at some point uh, during their time there. And so that was something from my freshman year, I said, I'm going to do this. Um, and a lot of people thought that, you know, if you majored in biology or, you know, biochem, chemistry, those sort of science uh, STEM classes, that it would be difficult to study abroad. Um, but it, it wasn't, you know, you start pretty much, if you know that you want to study abroad, you get everything that you need to do um, out of the way your first two years. And so I studied abroad in the fall of my junior year. Um, I went to England. Um, we got to live in London for uh, about a month and a half um, before we went to where the program was being held, which was at the University of Lancaster. Um, and so we were on a university campus. We were considered first year students um, by the university when we were studying abroad there. So we got to go through, you know, the, the first year orientation again and sort of like their introduction um, to university. It, granted, even though we were in our third year, you know, back home. So um, it was just a really interesting experience. Um, and like I said, that's where I ended up going back to do my master's. And I think um you know it is a much larger school um than Gettysburg is it has about 13,000 students um but the university operates on a collegiate system so think like Hogwarts they break them down into houses and so that then becomes your community um so I you know was taking biology courses there but I lived with people in my house, which was Lonsdale, um, who were majoring in philosophy or, um, you know, women and gender studies. It was just so many different things. So it reminded me a lot of what Gettysburg is, right? Like kind of, um, you'll have your, your majors, but you're constantly around people who are doing um, something entirely different. Um, and that was just a really great experience for me. And again, that's pretty much what brought me back there uh, to do my master's. So um, great experience. So Sarah, uh, the dad of a young woman who is an admitted student wants to know about how you felt about the safety on campus. Yeah, great question. Um, and I also had a protective dad who would have a protective dad who would have asked the same thing. Um, so it was very safe. And I think the one thing that I would call out, um, first of all, there's campus resources. So there's campus police um, who are always kind of walking around campus, driving around campus, making sure that things are safe. But the other thing that I would say is like Kevin and everybody has highlighted it. it's a community. And so people generally do watch out for each other. I mean, I don't want to say that nothing can ever happen, but um, I always had arrangements to kind of meet my friends if I was studying late, um, to have someone meet me on the way home. Um, there's not really a lot of opportunities to be walking around alone at night as a female, and it is a small campus. It's not in a big city. Um, so I, I did feel very safe there. Um, but I also felt like as a, as a freshman and as a new student, there was a lot of safety training. There was a lot of like understanding what your resources were. If you were in trouble, um, what kind of calls could you make? Where could you go? Um, so yeah, overall, I would say felt very safe and it was a, a really nice place to live, uh, for four years. Well, and here's something to think about for all of you who are again, admitted students. Our campus is not separated from the town by a tall wrought iron fence and several gates to walk through. So that tells you whether or not a campus is safe. So for all your choices, you're considering. If there's a big fence that separates the surrounding area from the campus, that's probably safety related. 
Also, with that Department of Public Safety literally being on patrol on foot, in cars, and on bicycles 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we have a vested interest in keeping the campus safe. And also, we're surrounded by a town that is world famous. World famous. Three million visitors per year come through that town of all political backgrounds, ethnicities, and nationalities. So we have to keep the town safe too because that's the economic health and wealth. So it's important to understand that you can look at a campus without getting out of the car. If you see a tall fence, safety is a tough one. So here are some more, and I know we're going to end soon, but there was a question about the area being conservative and did that affect you? I grew up in the town of Gettysburg like BJ, although later on moved away to Evanston, Illinois, just outside of Chicago, and now live in the DC suburbs. I don't see the town as conservative, but I'm interested in what your thoughts are. So how about if two of you take that? Kevin, you were there most recently, so I think you should go first. Sure. Um, so I think that the, the campus community balances out, um, I guess, um, a more conservative tilt from the town on campus. There's a much more... Um, emphasis on dialogue and bringing in guest speakers. I know in my time on campus, there were several um, debates that were set up with the different political clubs on campus and they bring in speakers from both sides and um, you know host formal educated um, dialogue. Um, so for me, I didn't really see that as a big hindrance during my college experience. I think at Gettysburg, we're, in care we're encouraged to share our ideas um, with others. Um, and yeah, I guess that's my two cents. And then Fergan, you're from an urban area. How do you feel about, again, the, I, I believe it's a false narrative, but I'm just asking the question because somebody asked. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, yeah, I, I, coming from, you know, Brooklyn, New York to Gettysburg, P, Gettysburg PA in, in general was a uh, you know, culture shock, right? Um, but, you know, kind of what Kevin said, I think there, I don't think it's necessarily like as conservative leaning as, um, uh, as some people might suggest or, or what they're um, what their question was leading to. Um, but, you know, for the most part, the, the campus um, really does foster, you know, ideas from both uh, sides of the political spectrum. And I mean, that's kind of what college in general is, right? Like that's, it's, it's not about having these sort of one-sided ideologies and, you know, having one be right or wrong. It's about being able to have these discussions in a meaningful way. Um, and I think that Gettysburg was really good at that. And um, that's definitely something that I, that I noticed. And again, that wasn't necessarily a hindrance for, for me and my education, so. Well, and here's what I tell people about the history of the area. It's one of the first towns above the historical Mason-Dixon line. So a place that helped enslaved people escape states that were fans of slavery not so conservative, a place that literally turned the American Civil War around, not so conservative, a place that had Abraham Lincoln speak to the hallowed ground around it, not so conservative, a place that President Eisenhower called home, and he was the president willing to arm people, willing to arm people, to integrate schools. Part of the reason why Dwight Eisenhower was attracted to it is that. So I call it a politically balanced area. And again, I lived there for almost four decades of my life. So I hope that answers the questioner's uh, curiosity. So I wanna wrap it up with these couple of things, folks, as we close. 
want to hear more about the sort of services that we offer to help you to launch into careers, your current alumni network, who do you keep in touch with? Why does any of it matter? And how is it that, I know this is a lot, how is it that they should use that information to choose Gettysburg? BJ, you should go first. You went off mute before. Uh, sure. You know, I, I think about my Gettysburg network and it runs the whole spectrum. So it's great friends I have that I made when I was a student, but it's also faculty um, and, uh, you know, administrators and, like Daryl, um, you know, long, I told everyone, I guess I'm the, I'm the oldest alum here, uh, 1994. So it's, you know, I've had the, the longest experience in that regard and that, you know, the, the network, uh, you know, has stayed solid since I was a student. Um, and, you know, it's even, it's expanded since, um, uh, you know, doing, doing things like this, but, you know, talking to students who are interested in, in Gettysburg and, and supporting the school, which I really love um, doing. It just, uh, you know, it's just uh, Gettysburg keeps giving. Let's keep going. A couple more people. Yeah, I'll go. I, I'm, I, so my network, I mentioned some of the professors, but also I've kept many of my friends, uh, just like I'm sure many of us have. Uh, so, you know, there's a tradition, you know, when you get married, they'll get, they'll send you a Gettysburg flag for your class year. I mean, I had that uh, with a bunch of my friends and we had our class of nine flag, which was really cool. Um, I'm going to a wedding of a Gettysburg friend in a couple months uh, in Boston. So it's fun to have friends living all over the country and even abroad um, that I've stayed connected with all this time. And then as an alum, uh, I've helped the career center to, you know, do externships with current students. It's something I wish I took more advantage of when I was a student, but I wasn't yet clear kind of what I wanted to do. So it's nice to help on the on the flip side of that. And then uh, in the fall, I joined the alumni board of directors. Um, and so that's a really, really cool way to be able to give back to the college now that I live nearby again, you know, and I'm drivable. I'm seeing a lot more of Daryl uh, and spending more time on campus again, which is really fun. Um, and that network is a really, really important part of my life. And I don't know how the other people on this phone feel, but when I go back to campus, it's like I'm reminded of this really core part of who I am, uh, which is really, really important uh, as the years go by. So thanks, Daryl. Bergen or Kevin, anything to add? Yeah, I mean, I was going to say, um, I mean, you know, what Sarah and BJ pointed out to your network, you know, obviously starts with the friends that you make um, at the college and, um, you know, kind of the relationships they make with your professors and, and other mentors um, that, that are along the way. Um, but I'm also finding that I, I you know, I'm have finding new uh, Gettysburg connections all the time. I mean, literally just two weeks ago, a new PI uh, moved on to the floor. So he took over the lab space um, that was next to the lab that I'm in. And I was wearing a cap that just had a G, you know, on it. And he said, what's the G on your hat for? I said, oh, I went to Gettysburg College, you know, Gettysburg PA, not really thinking that he would know uh, the, the school. And he said, I graduated from Gettysburg 50 years ago. Um, and so we, we, we grabbed lunch right after and I, you know, uh, he has a, um, a current student who's going to be coming to the lab to work for him over the summer. So it's just really interesting how, you know, you have your connections from a while ago and then you start making these new connections. And then um, so that's what I kind of love about it. You just really never know when you're going to bump into a Gettysburg alum. Kevin, any stories to add? Yeah, um, so for me, what I found about Gettysburg is from the first day I stepped on campus, I found it really easy to build a support system. 
Um, and as all the others have mentioned, it started with my friends, but also coaches, teammates, and faculty, administrators alike. Um, and having a solid support system, especially being so far from home, uh, was very like meaningful to me and enhanced my college experience. Uh, and today, I still feel that I've really maintained that Gettysburg support system that I formed from the start of my freshman year on campus, connecting with friends now in the real world um, and old professors now as well. I'm always reminded of the time that I had on campus and the shared experiences um, that we had together. Um, so I think that's a, a tidbit I would add. Um, is just being yourself and pursuing your passions, you'll find it really easy to build kind of an unofficial set of mentors and support system at Gettysburg. Um, and you'll always find people that will help you um, pursue your goals and, and reach um, those things that you set out to do. Thank you all for your time and your energy. It is so great to see the four of you. For all of you who are in our audience, I know that here's a difficult time. You have seven days seven days to make your final decision. But what I hope you took from this is this, Gettysburg College loyalty, it's really second to none. As someone who has worked at Gettysburg now for almost four decades, I see alumni who bring their children to look at Gettysburg College, but those who aren't are still saying, I don't care who it is, I don't care what the major is. If someone wants to pursue my career, I will talk to them and give them opportunities. Whether it's a shorter term externship, a summer long internship, multiple jobs or the first career step. And I said career, meaning something you want to do. That is Gettysburg College. I do know again, there was a person looking at larger schools, but at Gettysburg, we don't allow anonymity. We have more than 30,000 alums who are geared toward giving you direct opportunities. And this service through our Center for Career Engagement, it's yours for a lifetime. So take advantage of what I know as a strong network. And I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I'm not a Gettysburg College alum. What has kept me there for almost four decades is this type of loyalty, this type of intentional connection, and this type of an intentional way to build your future. Again, for your generation, we're not sure what those career stops will be. We know they will be across several different industries and several different stops, several locations. Technology is going to impact it. But if you can speak well, think well, write well, critically reason well, hallmarks of a Gettysburg College education. You will be successful, and who knows? These four might be a stepping stone to your success. Congratulations again, everybody. Thank you so much, and best of luck.